Guys, Lisa L. McLean, CFBI, the Certified Financial Educator, and it is Winning Wednesday. Are y'all ready for Winning Wednesday? Listen, it's time. It's time to get this crucial information for your business. Entrepreneurs, small business owners, multipreneurs, and nonprofits, I come in every Wednesday and share resources, information, tips, and tools to help you grow, thrive, succeed, and win in your business, but not only your business. I wanna to cater to the whole entrepreneur. So I wanna come in and help you with life topics, finance topics, mind and spirit topics, as well as business. And we do this every Wednesday. So this Wednesday, this week, we're talking business. We're getting down to business this week. And I wanna make sure that you are ready for tax time. We're at the end of the year. I know this is not the, the, the most popular topic, but it's something that we need to uh, understand, grasp, get a hold of, and make sure that we're doing what we need to do to prepare correctly as we go into the tax season. So today I'm gonna be sharing with you three sevens, three sevens. The first set of sevens is going to be uh, steps on how you can prepare for your tax time. The next set of sevens is going to be a small business uh, problems that you could run into when it, when it um, pertains to taxes. And then we're going to talk about seven small business tax tips. Are you guys ready for the 777 today? Yes, I love it. We know seven is a, is a heavenly number. And so I'm giving you three sevens today. Let's get started. Let's jump in. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. And I'm so excited that you're here with me today. We are going to talk about, we're going to start with seven steps to getting ready for your tax return or, or for tax season. The first step is to gather important documents. So gathering those tax documents that you need to prepare the return. Ensuring that your tax records are complete before filing is going to really help you. It's going to um, help make sure that there is no delays in processing your return and also help to make sure that there are no errors. So we want to make sure that we're gathering those important doc tax documents. Number two, step number two in getting ready for tax season for my entrepreneurs is to make sure that you are waiting to file your return until you have all of the documents in hand, whether that's in, by paper or electronically. And so the IRS uh, receives your income information directly from reporting companies. So that's why you wanna make sure that you're waiting until you receive all 1099s. If you've um, been paid uh, 600 or more in the calendar year from a customer, they are going to, from a, or a company, they're going to be required to send you a 1099. So you want to want to make sure that you have that 1099 in hand um, because the IRS already has it. And so they want to, they got to be able to match that information. And if you submit your return without that 1099 information that the company, the reporting company has already reported to the IRS, then we got problems. So wait until you have everything in hand before you actually file your return. Um, the IRS system will detect um, an error if you don't. Um, and so we want to go into step number three. Step three in planning for tax season and getting ready for tax season is to plan ahead for any potential tax refunds. So now I will say this. When I was younger, in my what 20s when I was, you know, I started working when I was 14, but I st I've been getting tax returns um, or doing tax returns since I was 14 years old. But when I was younger, I always thought that tax refunds were a good thing, right? <laughs> and I'm sure that there's there are many who still believe that. But I believe that tax refunds are the devil. And I'll tell you why. It's because the IRS is holding up your money. That means you have either paid in too much too much taxes, or you um, are taking advantage of credits at the end of the year or during tax, tax uh, return time, 
where you could have taken advantage of that during the year and decrease the amount of taxes that are being paid in so that you can do what you want to do with your own money. While that money is held up at the IRS and then you're getting this big tax return during tax return time, that money is just sitting idle. It's not making you any money. The IRS is not giving you any interest on it. And so that's why I don't believe in large tax re refunds. But you want to at least plan ahead for them. So the way that you can do that is really look at, <clears throat> excuse me, really look at your um, estimate of what your taxes could possibly be for the year. Um, at year end, I do this for all of my clients. I'll come in and do prepare a tax estimate based off of your revenue and your expenses through the year we can do an estimate to see about how your tax liability is going to look for that year and you can actually see what a potential tax refund would look like and see in planning for um, potential tax refunds that might be ahead you want to make sure that you have a plan for that. You want to make sure that you're looking at, okay, with this refund, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to reinvest it in the business? Am I going to purchase uh, uh, capital equipment? What am I doing with this tax refund that might be coming um, <clears throat> from my tax return? So that's number three. Step number four, we want to start actually prepping for preparing your return. You can actually start prepping and preparing your return in advance. Now, if you don't have tax software, you can do this in your accounting system and just using manual, um, a manual process. I, I've done this in the past. I've done this um, with Excel spreadsheets. So, you know, I would use either my Excel spreadsheets or the accounting software like QuickBooks to create the revenue and expenses and the categories. And then I would take the tax tables and figure out what you know the taxes are going to be looking like. And that's what I was saying up before about planning ahead for a possible tax refund. Um, as you get information in from different reporting companies in your tax software, if you have tax software or you can make sure that your tax preparer, contact me, I'll be glad to help you. Um, make sure that that tax preparer has the information as it's coming in and they can actually add the information and start building a, a picture of what that tax return is going to look like. So by the time you receive your last document, you will be pretty much aware of what that tax return is going to look like. So you can get that head start by prepare, starting to pre prepare the tax return now. Step number five, do research on professional tax preparers. Do your research. Look and see if there are any online reviews. Um, word of mouth is also helpful. You want to consider, you know, taking just a little extra time to make sure that you're partnering with the right tax professional. This is a partnership. So you want to make sure that it's the right person for you and your business. And also make sure that that tax preparer has a valid P10, a preparer tax uh, identification number. You want to make sure that they have this number because it is what authorizes them to file federal tax returns by the IRS. The IRS actually issues P10s to um, authorize tax preparers. Number six, stay up to date, stay up to date on the news from the IRS. The IRS is constantly, especially after January 1st, you'll see um, bulletins and just different information out there that the IRS might um, share with the public. Um, this year, uh, tax return season is going to start in late January. And so you know, the processing and acceptance of those returns won't start until around the 23rd or so of January. So just know that, just be prepared for that and stay, again, stay tuned for any updates from the IRS. And step number seven in preparing for tax season is make your last quarterly uh, estimate payment to the IRS. Your payment is due for the last quarter of 2022 on January 17th of 2023. And so as um, self-employed um, people, we have to estimate our tax liability and actually send in tax payments. Now, if you are a W-2 employee of your company, you're already doing this through that process, right? As far as your pay. 
but for the business income, you will want to make sure that you're also um, submitting estimated tax payments for the business and what the, the business is earning. And that's really for um, corporations. Um, for an LLC or a sole proprietorship, you're a pass-through entity. And so any profit that the business makes for an uh, S-Corp, an LLC or a sole proprietorship, that money, that profit, it flows through, it passes through to your individual tax return. So you want to make sure that you are um, up to date on paying in any estimated taxes because what happens is if you have not paid in enough taxes to the IRS during the year and you're stuck with a hefty tax uh, liability that you have to pay into the IRS, you could be charged uh, interest on that money and also penalties for not paying in the money when it was due during the calendar year. So that's crucial. Make sure you make that last payment by January 17th, 2023. So those were the seven steps of preparing and getting ready for tax season for you as small business owners and entrepreneurs and nonprofits. Let's talk about seven common small business tax issues or tax problems. I just want you to be aware of these. Um, so this is our second set of seven. The first um, common small business tax problem is if you have a tax liability of at least $1,000, you should send quarterly tax payment in. And this is just a kind of a, 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 a basis, a base point, you know, $1,000 of tax liability. You want to make sure that you're sending in some tax payment to the IRS. If you don't, again, you could be subject to interest and penalties. Um, another, the number two common small business tax problem is if you claim too many deductions, claiming too many deductions on your business tax return could trigger an audit by the IRS. <clears throat> now, we definitely want to take advantage of all legitimate tax deductions, right? So I'm not saying to shave off any tax deductions or don't claim them on your return, but just know that the larger the deductions, the, the, the more probable that you could get an audit by the IRS. So you wanna make sure that you have all of your supporting documentation, right? And keeping accurate, detailed records for all of your tax deductions that you're claiming on your tax return. Number three, common small business tax problem. One red flag for the IRS is if you estimate the amounts of your income and deductions rather than using the actual numbers. Now, they don't care about cents, right? But those dollars is what I'm talking about. So say for instance, you have um, a number, uh, whether it's um, the income number or the expense number, and you type 5,000 or you type 6,000 or you input 7,000 when the number is really $7,130. So you want to make sure that you're you're actually um, including the actual number, not rounded it off to a flat five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, what have you. Um, if those numbers look too flat and too round, it could flag you for an audit. So make sure you don't do that. Number four, common small business tax problem: leaving all of the calculations and the filing for just before the tax return is due. Guys, don't wait till the last minute. Now, I do encourage you, as I said, to wait until after January to file your tax return. Now, an S-Corp tax return is going to be due March 15th, while an LLC, um, a sole proprietorship, those are going to be due in April with the regular individual tax return filing deadline. But you want to make sure that you're not waiting to the very end. And why is that? because you want to alleviate as much stress as possible. As business owners, we already have to deal with a certain amount of stress in operating this business and the daily tasks that come with it. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're not creating any, any unnecessary stress, but also it could result in missed deductions if you're just kind of waiting to the last minute because now you're rushing to get it done and you could miss out on some opportunities to take advantage of some deductions. So 
Make sure that you're keeping track of your income and your expenses throughout the year, year round. Use a good um, accounting software program like QuickBooks. I use QuickBooks online for my clients. Um, get in touch with me. I will be happy to help you uh, choose a software or if you need bookkeeping and accounting services, I'm your person. Get in touch with me at Golden Path Services. So number five, one, two, three, four, five, seven of the seven common uh, small business tax problems is you could be paying more than you should if you work from home and are not taking advantage of the home office deduction. So hopefully if you've been working with a bookkeeper or an accountant or a tax preparer who is uh, well-versed in their, in, their, in their industry and knows what they're doing, you have already been taking advantage of this. Now, the thing with a home office deduction is you have actually have to make a profit in order to deduct um, those expenses. They have to be deducted from the profit of the business. If you have a business loss, you won't be able to deduct the home office expenses in that year. But I want to make sure that I'm, I'm just keeping this front of mind for you that you could be uh, paying in less taxes um, reducing that tax liability by claiming home office deductions. If your office is run out of your home exclusively in a location inside of your home, you can take advantage of this amazing um, deduction opportunity. <clears throat> Number six, seven common small business tax problems. Number six is if you report a loss year after year, my, my entrepreneurs, you guys should know this, small business owners, you should know this, the IRS could decide that your business activities are a hobby. So keep that in mind. Now, the IRS and the whole world understands and knows that any business as it's getting started, as it's, you know, just kind of getting the, the wheels rolling in the first year, maybe even two years, possibly even three years, could have a loss. But as you continue to go through the years and you're getting into maybe your fourth year, be mindful of that. Um, by maybe the fourth year or so, you should be starting to see a profit in your business and the IRS should be seeing that in your tax returns as well. So you wanna be um, conscious, conscious of that and cautious of that as well. Number seven of the common small business tax problems is some commonly missed business deductions are education and training expenses, depreciation on furniture, equipment, mileage. Are you keeping track of your business miles, any miles that you're driving in your car? Um, make sure that you're keeping a mileage log so that you can track those miles for business purposes and deduct those miles at the end of the year for your tax return. Now that's for if you are actually using the standard mileage rate approach versus the actual cost approach. So I just wanna make sure that I, I share that with you so that you understand that there are several allowed deductions that a lot of times don't get claimed by us as small business owners or entrepreneurs. And I wanna make sure that you're capturing those items in your tax return. So those are seven common small business tax problems, but now let's get into some good stuff. I wanna give you small business tax tips. So we're gonna have another set of seven. So this completes our third set of seven, and this is seven small business tax tips. If you've purchased a business this year or you're new, maybe new to the small business scene, small business tax structures. These are uh, seven things that I want you to keep in mind. And so the first thing is think about taxes all year long. It's not what we want to do. But if you are conscious and you're thinking about taxes during the year, you'll be mindful, yeah, mindful when you make a purchase when you incur some type of expense and you'll be thinking, oh, is this a business expense? Is this deductible? And so I want to make sure that you're um, not treating your taxes as a one time thing, as an annual uh, you know, event that happens. Taxes happen all throughout the year. So tax planning should be a year-round activity, waiting until the last minute to make 
tax preparation and, and all of that, it can be a lot more complicated. And then it limits your opportunity to save money when you wait to the very end. So I want you to start thinking about your taxes throughout the year from January 1st on. Um, so that's the first small business tax tip. The second one is be aware of, of changes to the tax law. Now, I know you're not an accountant. I know you're not a tax preparer. This is not your lane, but it helps as a small business owner that you're aware of changes in the tax laws that affect you as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a, a nonprofit. So even with the help of a skilled professional like me, you as a small business owner should just kind of be aware of what changes could impact you in this area. This ensures also that your tax preparer is doing the best job possible. As you are informed and, and they are informed, it keeps everybody informed about what's happening with the tax laws so that you are taking advantage of every possible, again, every possible opportunity to save money, to reduce your tax liability so that your business is um, realizing as much profit as possible. So number three, seven small business tips. Number three is you don't actually want a tax refund. I talked about this earlier. Tax refunds are the devil. <laughs> you don't want to have a tax refund. Now it's possible to get a tax refund as a small business, yes. But in most cases, it's not to your benefit. Uh, typically a, a refund is going to mean again that you overestimated the amount of taxes that you paid. We don't want to overestimate. We want to estimate. We want to come as close as possible, but we don't be want to be so far over what the actual tax liability is that now we're getting this huge tax refund at the end of the year <clears throat> when that money could have been reinvested in your business. So that is a uh, small business tax tip number 3. Number 4, to file your tax return you need an, an ID number, right? So either for sole proprietorship, LLC, you might be using your social 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 security number. And so for that, you know, that's your tax ID number. Um, for an S Corp, for a corporation, you're gonna be using the EIN, the employer identification number, um, or they call it a federal employer identification number, FEID. So make sure that you have that information and that you're ready um, with that for your tax return. Let's see, number five, number five, small business tax tips, self-employment tax. Do you know what self-employment tax is? Everybody doesn't know what self-employment tax is. If you've never really paid attention to um, the FICA, you know, the, the Social Security, Medicare, that number that was on a W-2, <laughs> when you had get a W-2 um, from an employer or that paycheck that is deducting those, that's what self-employment tax is actually made of. So the employer is paying a portion. When, you, when you're a W-2 employee, the employer is paying a portion and then you are paying a portion. And those two uh, totals together is what actually comprises self-employment tax. So where if you're working for a company, that company is paying 7.65%, yeah, 7.65% of your income as uh, that Social Security and Medicare, and then they're taking 7.65% of your income itself putting those together to make 15.3% and sending it to the IRS. Well, guess what? As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you are responsible for paying the entire 15.3% yourself out of your business income. So I wanna make sure that you know that you owe this 15.3% of self-employment tax on your net self-employment income. And that's what is covering um, the Medicare and the Social Security taxes that are required by the IRS. Um, if you have a, a side hustle, if you're you know not in full-time business, but you have a side hustle that supplements your income, the IRS does include this. They, they consider this income as self-employment income and you will be taxed accordingly. So number six, number six in our small business tax tips is all income 
is reportable. All income, <laughs> including tax pay, uh, cash payments, cash, any income you receive is supposed to be recorded with the IRS. And I learned this in uh, when I was in the College of Business taking accounting and tax courses. All income is reportable. So make sure that you're including not only those checks that have a trail, you know, those, those digital electronic payments that have a trail, but also those cash payments that you're receiving in. And then number seven, number seven of the small business tax tips is filing an extension. You can file an extension. If you're not ready to submit your taxes for my LLCs and my sole proprietors, if you're not ready for the April 15th deadline, you can file for an extension. Same for my escorts. If you're not ready for the March 15th deadline, you can file an extension with the IRS to extend the time uh, to file your return by six months. However, understand that this extension is not an extension to actually pay the taxes that are due. So if you are, um, oh, if you owe money to the IRS that should be submitted with the tax return, you're going to want to go ahead and make that payment by the tax return deadline. So again, the tax, uh, uh, the filing extension is not an extension of paying the tax it is only an extension of the requirement to file the actual return a bonus tip for you before we go a bonus tip for small business um tax time is business travel is 100 percent deductible so when you are doing business travel you want to make sure that you are you you are paying money so let me say it this way because personal travel is not deductible at all as a business owner, as an individual whatsoever. If you have any airline or hotel points, if you have those rewards and those points, you will want to use those points and rewards on personal travel and then pay cash, use your money to um, travel on business. That way you can take advantage of the business deduction for that travel. Does that make sense? I hope that bonus tip is good for you. Listen, we have covered the three sevens. We covered seven steps to preparing for your tax return. Then we went through seven small business tax problems that could creep up that I wanted you to be aware of. And then we covered seven small business tax tips. I hope this information is helpful. It is um, important that we understand this information as entrepreneurs, as small business owners, multi multipreneurs. I want to make sure that you have everything that you need to be successful. So I want to thank you again for joining me on this Winning and Living Golden channel where we come in and we talk about uh, topics on life, finances, mind, spirit, and business to help you win and live golden in your life and in your business. Thank you again for joining me on this episode of Winning with Lisa, where we win, we win, we win. And I'll see y'all guys back here next time. Take care until then. If I don't see you or talk to you before the new year, happy new year. 2023 is going to be amazing. Get ready for it. I'm so excited what the new year is going to bring to us as entrepreneurs and small business owners. See you guys next time.